Hello, I'm Jerry Jackson of the Managed Care Division here at the Alabama Medicaid Agency. I'm here today to provide a presentation to the PMPs regarding completing the Patient First Enrollment Application. And we'll go ahead and start our presentation. We're going to be going, going over um, the Patient First Application instruction and common mistakes that we're seeing being made now as the PMPs fill out this enrollment application and to assist you in not making these same mistakes. We'll also give you patient first information and contact information. In order to assist the patient first enrollment process, HP and Alabama Medicaid are offering webinars for outreach and questions our goal is to make sure we have a seamless transition to the statewide expansion of our health home program. Health home statewide expansion. As you know, the health, the health home program will be, will be statewide effective April 1, 2015. This is new for Alabama Medicaid previously. We only covered four areas of the state. Now we are going statewide and we'll be covering all counties in the state. The probationary RCOs will be managing the health home programs and they'll be doing this under Medicaid supervision. In order to pre prepare for the statewide expansion, providers must complete a patient first enrollment application and as well as they must have a signed contract with the probationary RCOs and these both must be completed by March 1st 2015 and to Medicaid. The RCO will send the contract to Medicaid and the PMP must send the patient first agreement to HP. If this complete information is not received by March 1st, 2015, your case management payments for the following month could be delayed. Providers must enroll individually in Patient First. This will be new to the, to the providers now that are enrolled as groups. This will especially affect the FQHCs and the RHCs and other providers that are enrolled currently as groups. All physicians currently enrolled in patient first groups must enroll with Medicaid as individual patient first providers. Recipients that are assigned to individual patient first NPIs only and will no longer be assigned to a group number. Currently there are all the patients that are assigned to groups now are only assigned to that group number and they're not assigned to individual PMPs within that group. Now they will be. If a provider is currently enrolled as a group, assignments will be made to participating patient first providers within that group. You will also receive, you are able to also receive assistance from HP in helping you make that assignment. You may also contact Latonda Cunningham or Gloria Wright with our Patient First program and they will be happy to assist you in making those changes. The individual Patient First enrollment form may be accessed on Medicaid's website. You will need to go down to the link at the bottom of the page. It's in green. When you click that, you will come to our enrollment forms. You need to scroll down to the bottom of the page and you will see a new provide patient first, individual patient first enrollment form, as well as a letter that has gone out to all PMPs. And you will be able to read that letter and run off a copy of the agreement form. At the same time, Medicaid has mailed a copy of the letter and with a packet uh, that includes the enrollment application to each PMP within the state. The patient first enrollment application key points. These are points that currently 
our provider enrollment at HP have found to be an issue. The first one is the description of the 24-7 coverage. If a hospital, if you are using a hospital for your 24-7 coverage, a copy of the agreement with the hospital or a letter on that hospital letterhead must be submitted with that patient first agreement. Refer to page 13 under brief description of your arrangements for 27 cover 24/7 coverage. If an answering service if you if you are using an answering service for your agreement, the name and the phone number of that answering service must be listed on the patient first agreement in attachment A on pages 12 and 13. Page 13 is where you put the phone number and the name. Description of admitting, admitting privileges. If another physician or group is providing admitting privileges, the physician performing the admit, admitting privilege services must sign page 15 of the agreement. One of the things that we are finding to be a problem is the ages admitted, the age group on page 15 does not match the current PMP's assignment. And let me give you an example of that. The current PMP may be enrolled to cover 0 to 99, make sure, or 0 to 18, make sure that the person covering for you can cover the same age group. We're having problems with that. Key points on the patient first agreement, other key points. Um, the mid-level extenders, the nurse practitioners and physician assistants must have a collaborating physician. When HP is looking at this, they are looking up to make sure that that nurse practitioner and or, and or physician assistant does have a collaborator. Only two extenders are allowed per physician. Please submit all individual agreements for one office in a single mailing. This process will facilitate the transition of the recipient assignment to individual providers. This really helps our HP enrollment staff to be able to complete that application without a break. Otherwise, if, an, if another provider comes in at a different time, she has to make sure that they're linked up to that group number. On page three of the agreement under EPSDT, if you're currently enrolled in the EPSDT program and have a CLIA certificate on file, then no additional information will be required. All you have to do is check yes on page three. Key points related to the health home program. All patient first providers should use their individual NPI number on all referrals beginning April 1, 2015. Referrals made with the patient first group NPI will continue to be honored until the referral expires or through March 31, 2016. All cascading referrals should identify the NPI number and the name of the recipient's PMP beginning on April 1st, 2015. This is extremely important so that the specialist that the, refer that the referral is going to ties back to that PMP. Key points on office referrals. Are you a patient first physician that has a CRNP or a PA assisting with your patient caseload? All PAs and CRNPs must use the individual's NPI number and name for referrals outside of the group practice. This is important to tie everything back to that patient first doctor. A PAs and CRNP, all PAs and CRNPs within the group practice must use individual PMP, must use the individual PMP's NPI number as a referring provider on their claims. If you are a PMP within that group practice, you do not have to do the same if another PMP within the practice is out that day and you're seeing that 
that physician's patients. A written referral from an individual PMP within a group practice is not required. Will a written referral be needed when an enrolled patient first provider within a group treats a patient assigned to another provider within the group? As I just said, a written patient first referral will not need to be completed when an enrolled PMP treats a patient that's assigned to another provider within that group practice. I do want to go back and reiterate that for PAs and CRNPs on their claims that uh, that PMP will need to be listed on the claim but a written referral will not need to be done as long as it's done within the group practice. Contact information, you may contact provider enrollment at any time on, this on the number listed you may also contact our Provider Assistance Center and Patient First with any Patient First program with any policy questions. Latonda Cunningham or Gloria Wright will be glad to assist you. Also, we've listed our HP representatives and you may call them with any questions. I'm Jerry Jackson of the Manish Hello. Medication. I'm Jerry Jackson here at of the Manish Medical Agency. Here at the Alabama Medical Agency, agency. provide a presentation to, to the PMP. Provide a presentation to the PMP. The patient first enrollment application. The patient first enrollment. And we'll go ahead and start our presentation. And we'll go ahead and start our presentation. We're going to be going going over. We're going um, to the be patient going, first going application over, um, instruction. The patient first and application instruction that we're seeing and common mistakes made now that we're as seeing the PMPs fill out this now application. As the PMPs fill out this enrollment to application assist you and in not making to these assist same you mistakes. In not making we'll these also same give the mistakes. patient first information. We'll also give the patient contact first information. information and contact information. In order to assist the patient first enrollment in process, order to assist HP the patient first enrollment and process, Medicaid HP are offering webinars and for Medicaid are outreach and webinars and questions for outreach our goal and is to questions. make sure we have a seamless our goal transition is to make sure we to have a seamless transition to of the statewide expansion of our health home program. Health home statewide expansion Health home statewide as you know, expansion. The, home, the health home program. As you know, the home the health home program will be effective April will be one, statewide 2015. For Alabama Medicaid, this is previously new. for Alabama we Medicaid, only previously four areas of the state we only now we're going areas statewide. of the state and will be now covering, we are covering statewide and will be covering state. covering. All the probationary RCOs state. will be managed. The probationary the RCOs programs, will be managed. And they'll be the doing this programs, under Medicaid supervision. And they'll be doing this under Medicaid in supervision. In order to pre prepare for the state in order to pre prepare for the state must complete a patient must complete enrollment application. A patient first and as well as they must have and as well as they must have with the probationary RCOs with the probationary both must RCOs be completed by March and first. These both must be completed by March first to Medicaid. Twenty fifteen and the RCO will send the contract to Medicaid must send and the contract to Medicaid must send and the PMP must send a patient first agreement. To if this complete information is not received if this by March first, twenty fifteen, is not received by March first, twenty fifteen, or the case management payments, payments, the case management payments could be delayed, or the following month could be delayed. Providers must enroll individually in patient first. Must enroll this will be individually in patient the, first. To this the will providers be new now that are enrolled to the, in this group. To the providers this will now that are enrolled in this group. The FQHC this will especially and the RHC, the FQHC and other providers and the RHC and other groups. providers that are enrolled. All physicians currently enrolled in patient first All physicians currently enrolled in patient first groups as individual must enroll with Medicaid as individual patient first Recipients that are assigned to individual patient first Recipients that are assigned to individual patient first and will no longer be assigned to a group. And will no longer be assigned to a group. There are 
all the patients currently there are that are assigned all the patient groups now are only assigned, assigned that group to number, groups now and are only assigned that group individual number individual and they're not within assigned that group. to individual they will be. within that group if a provider they is will currently be. enrolled as a group if a provider is currently will be enrolled made as a group participating assignments patient will be first made to participate in that group patient first providers within that group you will also group. receive a, you are you able to also receive assistance you are able to also receive assistance from Assignment and helping you may also make contact that assignment. Latonda Cunningham. You may also Gloria contact Wright. Latonda Cunningham with our patient first program, program, and they will be happy with our patient to assist first program, and, and they will be happy to changes. assist you in making those changes. The individual patient first enrollment form, the individual may patient be first enrollment on Medicaid form, website may be accessed on Medicaid. You will need to website. go down to the link at the you bottom need to go of down the page. To the in, link in at green. the bottom of the page, when you click in that, green, you will come when to you our click enrollment that, forms. You will you come to, to our enrollment to the forms. bottom of the page. You need to scroll and down to the bottom of the page. And you will see a new individual patient first enrollment form, individual patient as well as a letter. That has gone, gone out to all letter, PMPs. That has gone out to all PMPs. You will be able to read that letter, and you will be able to read that letter. Run off a copy, and of the run off a copy. At the, the same time, form. Medicaid has at the mailed same time a Medicaid copy of the letter, mailed and a with copy a of the letter, and of with a that includes the enrollment application that includes to each the PMP application within the state to each PMP within the state. The patient first enrollment application. The patient points. first enrollment application. These are points. Key points that these are points that our provider enrollment at HP provider enrollment has found at to HP be an issue. Have found to the be the first an one issue. is the description. The first of the one is the description coverage. of the twenty four seven coverage. If you are using if a hospital, a hospital. If you are using a hospital. Seven coverage, a copy, a, copy a, letter, a copy of the agreement with the hospital or a letter with the hospital or a letter on that hospital must be letterhead submitted with that patient first agreement. Must be submitted with that Refer patient to first agreement. Refer page 13 agreements. under brief description Refer to page of the arrangements for 27 under brief coverage. Refer to page 13 under brief description of the arrangements for 27 coverage. 24 if seven an answering service, if you if you are if using an answering answer service, service, if you if you are using an answering the service, name and the phone number. number the of that answering service and the phone number must be listed on the service. patient first agreement. Must be listed on the patient attachment first a agreement on page attachment twelve and thirteen. A. On pages twelve page and thirteen is where you put the phone number. Page thirteen and the is name. where you put the phone number and the name. Description of admitting many privileges. Description of admitting if another privileges. physician or group is providing if another physician or group is providing admitting many privileges. The physician the admit many must sign privileges. page Services. 15 of the agreement. Must sign page 15 of the agreement. One of the things that we are finding to be a problem. One of the things that we are finding to be a problem. Admitted the age the ages on page 15, the age group does not match 15, the current PMPs. Does not match assignment. the current PMPs. And let me give you an example of that. And the current let me give you an example PMP of that. Maybe the current PMP to cover maybe enroll zero to nine nine. Make sure to nine or zero to eighteen. Make, make sure, sure that the person is zero to eighteen. Make sure that the person covering for can you cover the same age group. Can cover the same age that. group. We're having problems with that. Key points on the patient first agreement. Other key, key points, points on the patient um, the first agreement. Mid-level extenders and nurse practitioners. Um, mid-level extenders and nurse practitioners must and have a collaborating physician. Must have a when HP physician. is looking at this, when HP they are looking, looking up to make this, sure that that nurse they practitioner are looking up to make sure that that nurse and practitioner or physician assistant or does and have or a physician assistant only does two have extenders a are allowed per physician only two extenders are allowed per please physician please submit all individual agreements please submit all for one individual agreements in a single mailing for one office this process in a single will facilitate mailing. the transition this process of the will facilitate assignment the transition to individual of the assignment to this really providers. helps our HP. This really helps our HP staff to be able to complete that application be able to complete that Otherwise, application if a, if if another Otherwise, provider comes in at a different if a, time, if another provider comes she has in to at make sure that they're linked up to that group. She has number. to make sure that they're linked up to that group. On page number. three of the agreement under EPSCT, on page three of the agreement under EPSCT, the EPSCT if you're currently enrolled in the EPSCT program and have no additional information. 
then no additional all you have to do is check yes. All you have to do is three. check yes on page three. Key points related to the health home program. Key points related all to the health patient home first program. Providers should use their individual all patient NPI first NPI providers should use their individual all NPI beginning April on 1, all referrals beginning April 1, 2015. Referrals made with the patient first group referrals NPI made with the patient will continue first to be honored NPI until the referral will continue to be honored until the referral March 31st, 2016. Or through March 31st. All cascading referrals should identify all the NPI number and the name of the recipient and the name of the recipient beginning on April 1st, PMP, 2015. Beginning on this April 1st, 2015. This so is extremely important. This is that the referral so that the specialist the referral is that going refer, to the ties the back to is that going to PMP. Ties back to that PMP. Key points on office referrals. Key points on are you a patient referrals. first physician that has a are CRMP you a patient first physician that has a CRMP or a PA assisting with your patient All PAs and CRMPs must use all PAs and CRMPs must use the individual's NPI number and referrals outside of the group practice. This is important to tie everything back to that patient first doctor. This is important to tie everything back to that patient first doctor. PAs and CRMPs all PAs and CRMPs within all the group practice and CRMP must use the individual PMP must use the individual PMP NPI must use the individual as a referring NPI number on their client as a referring provider if you are a PMP within that group practice if you are a PMP you do not have to do the same if another not have to do the same with any another out that day and you're seeing in the practices out that day and you're seeing that that a written referral from an individual a written PMP referral a from an individual PMP within a group practice is not required. Will a written referral be needed when an enrolled Will patient a first provider be needed when an enrolled treats patient, a patient first provider assigned within a group to another patient provider within a group? As I just said, a written patient first referral as I just said, will not need to be completed. Will not need to be clean and completed. Treats a patient that's assigned to another patient that's assigned that group practice. I do want to go back and reiterate. I do want to go back and reiterate. CRMP that for PAs and CRMPs, 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 that you may contact the provider enrollment at any time. You may contact provider enrollment at any time on, this, on the number. You may also listed. contact our provider assistance center. You may also contact our patient first assistance with center. Any patient and first patient program. first with any policy patient questions. Patient first program. The time the Cunningham policy question or right will be glad to assist you. The time or Gloria Wright will be glad to assist also, you. Also, we've listed our HP representatives. Also, we've listed and our HP representatives with any questions. And you may call them with any questions. And with that. We'll end our and with that, presentation. We'll end our presentation.